Hi, Steve here from Steve's Internet Guide. In this video, we're going to take a look at the loop and callbacks in the Python MQTT client. Now, when you write um, client code using the Python client, you would have had to use the loop function, and often you'll see a, a construction like this. Um, you create a client object, then you connect to the broker, and then you start a loop. But why do you start a loop? Well, you have to remember that the MQTT that the MQTT protocol uses a publish and subscribe model. So what happens is when you subscribe to a topic on a broker, you're basically telling the broker, uh, if you get messages on this topic, then send them to me. So you don't know when you'll be receiving the messages. It would be pretty pointless that your um, client code subscribe to the broker and sat there doing nothing, waiting for messages to come from the broker. So the approach you tend to use is that your your script periodically checks for new messages and if it gets new messages it lets you know about it. Now here's a little diagram that's tried to illustrate the the way the incoming and outgoing messages work and what happens when you get a, an incoming messages from the from the network it gets placed in a receive buffer and then it's up to your program to take that message from the receive buffer and likewise with outgoing messages the outgoing messages get placed in the outgoing buffer and then they're sent onto the network at this end of here it's a low level function a low level software that receives the messages from the network and sends messages onto the network and at this side here it's your your program that's responsible for placing the messages in the outgoing buffer and picking them up from the receive buffer the job of the loop function uh, is to actually process the outgoing and the incoming message buffers. This loop function is running and it periodically checks the incoming buffers and, and the outgoing buffers and it processes the messages. On the incoming side it analyzes the incoming messages and it looks at the message type. It could be a connection acknowledge message, it could be a, a disconnect acknowledge message, it could be a publish acknowledge message and it analyzes that and depending on the the message it sees it calls a callback or it triggers a, a appropriate callback and that callback is responsible for then processing that message further now if you don't call the loop function then those those messages incoming and outgoing on processed and the callbacks on on triggered now if you don't have a callback for the appropriate uh, incoming message type then basically that incoming message type is just ignored now to call the loop function, uh, the client provides three methods. It's the one is the loop start method, the other is the loop forever method, and the other is the, the just the loop method. Now the loop start method starts a new thread and it calls a loop at regular intervals and uh, it's set in the loop start function. It also handles reconnects automatically, so if for some reason the client uh, gets disconnected, it will automatically try to reconnect. And to stop it you need to use the loop stop method and you should stop the loop when your script finishes so there should be some code in your script if you're using the loop start method to stop it at the at the end now the loop forever method blocks a program and it's useful when the program must run indefinitely so you usually find it right at the end of your script so you go through the code and you just loop forever and the loop forever function also handles automatic reconnects now you can call the loop manually and so if you do that you have to do it at regular intervals so here's a bit of pseudocode so you have some while loop and the while loop does something and inside that while loop you call the the loop and I say you do this at regular intervals now the the loop is a blocking function and it defaults to one second so it basically sits there waits for one second if if it hasn't got a message it waits to to find one and I tend to call to use a, a shorter period here it's 100 milliseconds now if you're going to call the script manually or sorry the loop manually then you need to also include um, client code to handle reconnects because it doesn't handle reconnects it's important to note that if your client script has more than one client connection then you need to call or start a, a loop for each client connection so for example if I create two clients client one and client two in the script then I would expect to see the client one dot loop and the client two dot loop in the script or client one dot loop start or client two dot loop start somewhere 
in the script. So let's have a look at callbacks. Uh, callbacks are functions that are called in response to an event. And we saw earlier with the when I looked at the diagram explaining the the loop function that the the loop function processes the incoming messages and it looks for the message type and uses a message type to trigger an event. Now the events for and callbacks for the client are listed here and the event connection acknowledged when you get the, that uh, message coming from the from the broker it will trigger the on connect callback and the event disconnection acknowledged when you get a disconnect message coming back from the broker will trigger the on disconnect callback and you can see the list there probably the most important one here is the event message received uh, that's when you get an incoming message from the broker and that triggers the on message callback now the the client is designed to use the callbacks if they exist, but it doesn't provide any default callback functions. It does provide a mechanism to set them. So to use a callback, you need to do two things. You need to create the callback function, and then you need to assign the function to the callback. And we're going to do an example here. We're going to do the onConnect callback. At first, you create the, the function, and here's the function here. Now, it's a very simple function. All I'm doing really is printing out a message. Well, I'm logging a message here, and then I'm setting a flag client connected flag to true and now I associate the function with the on connect callback and this is the statement I use here clients dot on connect equals on connect now the name of the function I've called it on connect it can be anything you want if I had called it my function then this would have been the assignment client dot on connect equals my function callbacks and the client loop now the callbacks are dependent on the client loop as I explained earlier without the client loop running the callbacks aren't triggered and here's an example script and we're going to use the on connect um, function in the script the important thing here is the on connect function sets a flag and we're going to use this flag to break out from a loop so here I've got a while loop while the loop flag is one and it's going to keep running around this loop and saying waiting for the callback to occur and as soon as the callback occurs then it sets the flag to zero so this loop should fail and we should drop to the end and simply disconnect and here we stop the loop it's very important when you start a loop you, that you stop it at the end of your script so always have a, a stop at the end of the script okay let's see how it works and you can see here waiting for callback to occur and it waits up five seconds and then it's got the callback and the script ends now let's sabotage the script and all i'm doing is i'm st stopping the loop from starting just by commenting it out and you can see here we keep going down waiting for the callback to occur and i terminated that script using Control c because it was never going to end because the flag was never going to be set because the loop wasn't running and without the loop running the callback's not going to be triggered so you need to have the loop running to trigger the callback. Just one more thing to consider, asynchronous or synchronous. If you use the print statement in the callbacks and if you use the print statement in the main program, then if you're also using the loop start and loop forever functions, you'll find that the messages become jumbled. And this is because they, the loop start, loop start and loop forever run in a separate thread, uh, which makes it basically independent of the main the main program and as you've got no control over when the callbacks are going to be triggered they can be triggered at any time in the main program now if you're using the loop function manually then because you're using it as part of your main program you've got control of when you call it and so the callbacks will then effectively be synchronous because they'll only be called when you actually call the the loop function there's a couple of links here to a couple of tutorials on the site one about the loop function the other about callbacks that you may be interested in reading and they have also other links to other tutorials that may be may be of interest so that's the end of the video if you liked it then use the like button below if you've got comments on the video then use the comment form below and if you'd like to be notified of new videos on the channel then you can always subscribe to the channel until next time bye